you are an aspiring investor you want to buy your first property or you want to buy your second third or fourth you want to grow your portfolio but you don't know how because you're running out of money or you don't have money then this video is for you in this video i'm going to share six creative ways on how to buy properties with less money as possible or no money as possible stay tuned Namaskar, Aditya here. Welcome back to my channel. So, as I said, again, in this video, it's, it's really unique. I, I never shared everything in one video that how I was able to grow my portfolio. And I'm pretty sure this will change your life, especially you've been procrastinating on buying more properties or at least to buy your first property. So stick till the end. I promise you it will change your way of thinking and it will help you give you the strategies that you can apply as soon as possible. So strategy number one, this I have talked on many videos, but still people ask me how to find the first property because I was surprised not many people know. The first best strategy is to buy the house has a primary resident with low money down, which is either 5% down in Canada, if you're in North America, in US, maybe like 3% down because you're buying the purpose of your purchase is to move into the property. But if you buy the same property, two unit or three unit or four unit, now you have rental income as well. So if you're buying a 200,000 property, all you need is 10,000 in Canada, which is 5% of you know 200,000 or if it's 500,000 still it's 25,000 money from your pocket and of course you need to qualify for the mortgage so that's a thing a tricky thing with the first first time home buyer way of buying it with 5% down is you need to qualify of course but the thing is if you're working you already have a solid income or if you're self employed you already are filing uh, income from last couple of years then good news a lot of lenders are there to lend you money so go talk to them and you know i, I actually went a little bit more deep into five percent down concept on other videos check out there or in the description that's how i started actually my first property i bought it for hundred thousand of course don't ask me call me for hundred thousand properties those are no more in windsor but uh, in 2017 uh, March, that's when I got my first property. It was 102,000, five percent down, which is five thousand. And actually, bank even lended me for renovations as well. So it was like total 125, five percent of that what I paid from my pocket. So that's the first best strategy I would recommend anyone who is starting out. And the strategy number two. So again, this is also many people overlook which is jv find a joint venture partner who does qualify for mortgage and who has money so i know many people asked me oh i don't have any experience how come someone will be jving with me hold on there you already might have someone in your life doesn't matter whether you have experience or not they trust you for example your parents I know a couple of my friends, my very good friend and mentor, uh, Cassidy and Matt, these guys, amazing story. They started buying the, their first property, actually their parents or their JV partners. So literally what they did, like when they were, I believe 21 or 20, they were like 20 age, not even 20, I believe, maybe 19. They are so young, but they went into this, you know, uh, seminars and they learned about real estate investing. They learned how to analyze the property and they went in and find a couple of properties. They, they started working with an agent, got the properties, got the numbers and they presented to their parents. Literally, they presented like ton of properties until their parents said, OK, OK, we'll, we'll help you. And, you know, maybe not just for making money, but we'll help you. Right. That's how they started. And till the date, their parents are their primary JV partners. So someone in your life you might have. So you have to dig into it to find that people who really trust you. Again, once they understand the power of that, your active role, 
they'll invest more. And again, that's how I bought my uh, four properties. I have a JV partner till the date, only one partner. He, he loves me and I love him because, you know, it's perfect matching. They don't have time to, you know, spend in finding the property. They don't have time to get the renovations done. They don't have time to, you know, look, go after the mortgage person to get the refinancing done and all those things. But they have money. So I have all those time in my hand. So that's how we became a good partners in buying the property. So for me, it's no money down, but I'm putting my active energy. And for them, they're making their money solid returns by investing with active partners so it's a perfect win-win situation so you have to find those partners again don't tell yourself false stories that who will trust you i got my jv partner on my third property and my friends cassie and matt they got like on their first property sorry cassie and matt i am including your name without asking you hope you have your proper missions if you're watching and third strategy this is a fantastic way to grow or buy as number of properties as possible it's, it's it's fantastic again it's a strategy called vendor take back so you might heard me talking on a couple of videos i have another video where i actually went over full details on how i got a property through vendor take back you can check out more details there but if you don't know what is vendor take back it's basically very simple when you buy a property in canada or us you put some money down from your pocket and you go have a bank lend you money give you money to buy the house like the rest of the money so if you have 10 percent of hundred thousand ten thousand dollars bank will be giving you ninety thousand dollars so whereas in vtb means now instead of you going to the bank now you go to the sellers go to the sellers say hey especially the sellers who doesn't have mortgage on their property so they, they they've been owning this property for 20 30 40 years they're the one you know most likely they don't have any mortgage on that property now you approach them and say hey um i will give you if the property value is 300,000 i i'll give you 310,000, but i want you to hold mortgage for me so instead of you going to the bank now you say hey hold the mortgage for me i'll um 310,000 is the price and you hold 300,000 mortgage i'll give you 10,000 deposit and your money is secured against the property that you're buying so just like the bank so you have if you don't pay your mortgage payments the seller can take his property back so this is a really a fantastic strategy that actually both seller and you both of you win here is how so seller if he owns a couple of properties and he's making good money now if he sells right away he has to pay capital gains especially if it's an investment property so now for him he can defer his taxes for a certain period to, to save on the taxes that's number one number two of course when you know he sell the property he gets the money and if he go put it in the bank or stocks they would hardly make two or three percent um, return on money but whereas now he can and there there is no guarantee here he can give you that money and you pay him every month principal and interest just like you pay mortgage so he's making cash flow every month without doing anything and secured against his own property so if he is confident if he is confident about his property then he would be most likely willing to do it so you as a buyer you need to present the information such a way that he understands and again i'm not an accountant to tell you how, how exactly the tax side work for vtb your best bet call an accountant ask him hey i'm looking to get a mortgage from a guy who owns this bunch of money in his property what is the advantages what are the disadvantages what i need to be aware of call them you will get more details but i say it's a fantastic uh, strategy because you know now you have a mortgage with a private person so they don't show up on the credit scores credit history they don't show up so why it's good because now you can buy more property so that's how some people you might heard like who has 100 properties 200 properties 
some of them they might took a winner take back from the lenders maybe year two or three and you can even once your property value goes up you can refinance and put a bigger mortgage and just get the seller out so it's it's a fantastic strategy that uh, if you apply it right you you can uh, buy as many properties as possible with less less money or no money i have a good friend who actually they got their one of the property the seller they really liked the my friend so they had a commitment they said you know what we'll pay you extra on the price but no interest they hold the mortgage for like two or three years so you're buying the property for no money at all so that's a great way and strategy number four again this might not be for everyone but for people who own already own properties so at least one property if you have a primary home you've been living in that house for last five years now most likely you build some equity in your property the mortgage you paid down and also over the period the property prices increases so why that matters for you if you already own a house let's say you purchased a property like five years ago for 300,000 now your property value is 500,000 so you bought it for 300,000 now your value is 500,000 and you paid uh, probably another 50,000 down in principle every month you through your mortgage payments so now you go to the bank and say hey my current value of the property is 500,000 can you lend me on this one so now what the bank does they will lend you 80% loan to value of 500,000 so 80% of 500,000 is 400,000 so you they give you cash for 400,000 so you can pay the old mortgage which could be 250,000 you pay that back and you still have 150,000 in your hand you go use that as a down payment buy another property and get a mortgage from the bank for 80% you can buy one or two or three properties in Windsor. You can even buy a small six unit building with that 150,000 in Windsor. So that's a fantastic strategy. Like many homeowners, especially who wanted to invest, they don't know that they're sitting on equity. Honestly, like in recent times, I had at least uh, four or five clients who reached out to me saying that, hey, I really love to invest, but um, I don't know what to do. So I was like digging more on what do you do? What do you own currently? How much is your property current? Like, you know, how much you got it for? And I look up how much their property value now based on some area comparables. I see there is an appreciation happened. So now why don't you take advantage? So I hooked them up with the mortgage broker. They go talk to the mortgage person and boom, got appraisal more than what they thought. And all of a sudden they have extra cash and bought another property with that money so trust me that's a great way to grow because you're using other people's money to buy properties and over the time the properties will appreciate over the time the properties mortgage will be paying down so if you're leveraging your money now if you buy five properties with others people money and in five ten years down the road through the inflation, the property prices goes up, but forget about the property prices. The mortgage is paying down by tenants. So if tenants paying your mortgage, that means what is happening? You're building equity in your properties. Maybe after five years, again, you do the same thing or just pay it down and just relax and enjoy the life and go and have a vodka in the beach. So that's another great way to grow your portfolio. And the number five strategy, Again, this is a popular strategy that many, especially people who are in a flipping business, who buy properties, do renovations and sell, they use it. But if you do it right, you can use it for yourself and make a uh, buy multiple properties, which is private money. Go talk to the brokers, mortgage brokers, not the banks, mortgage brokers in your town, wherever you're living, and they will be able to help you to get private money for you from private people. So what private money means if you don't have any idea? Basically, you're buying a property, someone else, like some individual sitting somewhere, you don't even know who that person is, or lending you money, 
he, they don't really go through a severe checklist like banks to qualify you for that mortgage. Basically, they look at your profile, they look at you, the property. If the basic things meet, they will lend you money even up to 90 or 100%. Some, I know some lenders, they even lend you 100% plus improvements. Again, it's a skills that you need to learn or it's a, you need to find the right people to find about those things. It's not impossible. It's hard to find those private money people, but it's uh, definitely doable if you're hungry for it, if you're hungry to buy your first property or even to buy multiple properties. But the key element here is the finding the right property. You need to find the right property where if the deal makes sense, there will be money coming in. And the last and final strategies, number six, is RRSP money. RRSP in Canada, maybe in US, 401k. There are different countries have different ways, which is actually what RRSP means is, so if you're working, if you're making money every year, the government gives you a retirement plan where to save some taxes, people pay every year like contribute to this RSP account. So if you're making 100,000, you contribute 20,000 to RSP. Of course, again, there is limits, but I'm just saying, let's say 5,000 every year. So you contribute 5,000 to your RSP account. Now you save some taxes on your annual income. And at the end, this RSP is your retirement money. So there are people, many people, especially I know at least doctors, lawyers, or who are making higher pay scale like over 100,000 they pay a lot of RSPs to save taxes so now they have like 300 400,000 or 500,000 cash in RRSPs so if that is in RRSPs they might be you know investing in stocks which are very like probably very lucrative returns probably 2 or 3 or 4 percent but if they if you convince them to lend you that money for you to purchase this property 90 or 100 percent or 80 percent again depend on your relation to that person just like private money it's pretty much the same thing maybe the broker will get you that private money but this rsp is maybe you can find in your inner circle your parents or your parents friends or your friends if you're working you your manager if if you are working in a company your boss whoever whatever it takes to find the people who has RRSPs and convince them for them to loan you that money for you to buy this property because that's a win-win situation again because they are putting this money in RRSPs and they're pretty much forgetting till their retirement but the cool thing is here if they lend you for against your property it's secure first of all second of all um, they're going to pay you higher interest. They're going to make higher returns competitive to those stocks and bonds or wherever that RSP is invested. So it's way better returns. Again, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a tax a financial advisor. Obviously, reach out to your guys to you know find the detailed nitty gritties on that part. I know for sure this is doable because I never applied this strategy, but I got private money through a broker and broker told me that he got the lender actually the person who is lending me with the money it's actually from his rrsps so if they can do it i'm pretty sure we can do it and there are there are you know certain companies google ask google how to set up rrsps as a mortgage and there are many blogs you will come across read through them and see how exactly to set it up but that's the strategy that you can apply and buy more properties so these are the strategies I have for you guys today. But in a nutshell, here's what I'll conclude with. Literally, I applied five out of the six strategies to grow my portfolio. So my first property was with 5% down. My second property, I got the bank's money and um, used some savings. But my third property, I got JV partner. For my fourth property, um, maybe if you haven't seen my Standwich project, I got private money. So I also got another property for vendor take back. So these are the different strategies that I use. So here you go. You got all my secrets. So go do it and let me know in the comments below if you have bought any properties using these strategies. I would like to see 
and if you, you think i provided value for you then do me a favor hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends and uh, looking forward to see you on next video have a wonderful day